Hello everyone, welcome to A Grey Barn Rising, the video blog of the Wabash Watershed. I'm sitting here, of course, with Bootsy Beagle, and um, reading the poems this evening of the great French poet Robert Desnos. Robert Desnos uh, began in the early period of the Surrealist movement. He was really well known in the movement for having the rare capacity to talk while he was asleep and he would bring over messages from sleep from the dream state into waking reality and he was very much instrumental in the early period of, of the surrealist movement for that later he was expelled from the movement It's kind of a long and interesting story where the sleep sessions what the surrealist called the surrealist sleep sessions began getting a little out of hand and they were discontinued by Andre Breton and some of the other Surrealists. So Robert Desnos began to lose favor in the group after a while because that was one of his primary contributions. However, it would really be a shame if that's all we thought about in terms of Robert Desnos and his contribution to Surrealism because he was was such a great poet and his poems remain very much uh, alive still to this day. Particularly his early poems, his love poems, are full of such a longing and passion and deep interconnection. I, I simply adore them. A little brief context before I read a few of his love poems. Robert Desnos had fallen madly in love with a, a dance hall singer named Yvette George. She was actually rumored to be the illegitimate daughter of the poet Gerard de Nerval. Uh, that's never been quite substantiated, but regardless, Robert Desnos was madly in love with her, and it was a love that was unrequited. These poems, we don't know exactly who they're for, but uh, some of them certainly uh, read as if uh, they're for the beloved, probably for Yvette George, but even if it's an undefinable beloved, they're still very powerful. So I wanted to share a few of these with you. This is called The Way a Hand at the Moment of Death, and I'm going to be reading from the selected poems of Robert Desnos, translated by Carolyn Forche and William Kulik. Wonderful book here that I bought in a used bookstore one summer in Montana many years ago. I always remember the places where I buy my books, uh, to the best of my recollection. And this was memorable because I had been searching for this book for some years. This, of course, was way before the uh, online craze where you could push a button and get any book you wanted delivered to your door. There are many wonderful translations of Robert Desnos. There's a recent one by Marianne Cause, Essential Writings of Robert Desnos. Uh, and a host of others. This is my particular favorite, so I want to read from it this evening. The Way a Hand at the Moment of Death. The way a hand is raised at the moment of death or shipwreck, like the rays of the setting sun, your looks fly out in all directions. There's no more time left, maybe no more time to see me, but the falling leaf and the turning wheel tell you nothing on earth lasts forever except love. And I need to convince myself of that. Lifeboats painted shades of red, fleeting storms, an old-fashioned waltz carried by time and the wind through the wide open spaces of the sky. Landscapes. The only embrace I need is the one I long for. And let the cocks crowing die. The way a fist is clenched at the moment of death, my heart is gripped by pain. As long as I've known you, I've never cried. I love my love too much to cry. You'll cry on my grave, or I on yours. It won't be too late. I'll lie. I'll say you were my mistress. Though there's really no point to it, you and I will soon be dead. Robert Desnos, for those of you uh, 
I'm curious about his time frame in the Surrealist movement, his time frame in life. He was born in 1900 and uh, he died in 1945. So, another incredible poem by Desnos um, and an intense poem called No, Love is Not Dead. No, love is not dead in this heart, these eyes and this mouth that announced the start of its own funeral. Listen, I've had enough of the picturesque, the colorful, and the charming. I love love, its tenderness and cruelty. My love has only one name, one form. Everything disappears, all mouths cling to that one. My love has just one name, one form. And if someday you remember, O oh you, form and name of my love, one day on the ocean between America and Europe, at the hour when the last ray of light sparkles on the undulating surface of the waves, or else on a stormy night beneath a tree in the countryside, or in a speeding car, a spring morning on the boulevard, mal shares, a rainy day just before going to bed at dawn. Tell yourself, I order your familiar spirit that I alone loved you more, and it's a shame you didn't know it. Tell yourself there's no need to regret. Ronsar and Baudelaire before me sang the sorrows of women, old or dead, who scorned the purest love. When you are dead, you will still be lovely and desirable. I'll be dead already, completely enclosed in your immortal body, in your astounding image forever there, among the endless marvels and of life and eternity. But if I'm alive, the sound of your voice, your radiant looks, your smell, the smell of your hair, and many other things will live on inside me, in me. And I'm not Bonsar or Baudelaire. I'm Robert Desnos, who, because I knew and loved you, is as good as they are. I'm Robert Desnos, who wants to be remembered on this vile earth for nothing but his love of you. He's such a beautiful poet. I think of all the French Surrealists, Robert Desnos probably expressed the heart qualities more than any other of the French Surrealist poets, certainly of that period. One of the great gifts that he gave to the Surrealist movement, and I believe to world poetry, was his deep involvement in conjuring and evocation of the possibilities of life through expression of the word. This final poem that I'm going to read in this episode this evening is one of his more famous poems and certainly my favorite of his poems, The Voice of Robert Desnos. It's um, a poem of deep invocation. You know that moment where many poets are obsessed with this, this whole idea that if you say it just right, it'll happen. The magic of words. We go back to, I'm thinking about Ernst Cassir and his great book, Myth and Language, that in our more primordial selves, in our primordial sense of what it means to be a human, and those roots that great poets draw upon, what it means to be a poet, that if we say it just right, we can affect material circumstances. And I, I feel and sense a thread of that in this, thread, not threat, a thread of that in this poem the voice of Robert Desnos. 
the voice of Robert Desnos. So like a flower and a current of air, the flow of water, fleeting shadows, the smile glimpsed at midnight this excellent evening. So like every joy and every sadness, it's the midnight past lifting its naked body above belfries and poplars. I call to me those lost in the fields, old skeletons, young oaks cut down, scraps of cloth rotting on the ground and linen drying in farm country. I call tornadoes and hurricanes, storms, typhoons, cyclones, tidal waves, earthquakes. I call the smoke of volcanoes and the smoke of cigarettes, the rings of smoke from expensive cigars. I call lovers and loved ones. I call the living and the dead. I call grave diggers. I call assassins. I call hangmen, pilots, bricklayers, architects, assassins. I call the flesh. I call the one I love. I call the one I love. I call the one I love. The jubilant midnight unfolds its satin wings and perches on my bed. The belfries and the poplars bend to my wish. The former collapse, the latter bow down. Those lost in the fields are found in finding me. The old skeletons are revived by my voice. The young oaks cut down are covered with foliage. The scraps of cloth rotting on the ground and in the earth snap too at the sound of my voice like a flag of rebellion. The linen drying in farm country clothes adorable women whom I do not adore, who come to me obeying my voice, adoring tornadoes revolve in my mouth, hurricanes, if it is possible, redden my lips. Storms roar at my feet. Typhoons, if it is possible, ruffle me. I get drunken kisses from the cyclones. The tidal waves come to die at my feet. The earthquakes do not shake me, but fade completely at my command. The smoke of volcanoes clothes me with its vapors and the smoke of cigarettes perfumes me, and the rings of cigar smoke crown me. Loves and loves so long hunted find refuge in me. Lovers listen to my voice. The living and the dead yield to me and salute me, the former coldly, the latter warmly. The grave diggers abandon the hardly dug graves, and declare that I alone may command their nightly work. The assassins greet me. The hangmen invoke the revolution, invoke my voice, invoke my name. The pilots are guided by my eyes. The bricklayers are dizzied, listening to me. The architects leave for the desert. The assassins bless me. Flesh trembles when I call. The one I love is not listening. The one I love does not hear. The one I love does not answer. This poem is dated December 14th, 1926. Again, it's entitled The Voice of Robert Desnos. It's a brief sampling of the poems of Robert Desnos, the great French Surrealist poet, and I chose a few poems from the early part of his career, but his work is expansive. He continued writing throughout his life, and I hope that you'll look for this book 
and or other books of Robert Desnos and continue to read him. He's really worth delving into deeply, and it was such a pleasure this evening to share his poems with you.